diffraction of light we have to define diffraction of light diffraction of light diffraction of light diffraction of light is the phenomenon is the phenomenon of bending of light diffraction of light is the phenomenon of bending of light diffraction of light is the phenomenon of bending of light that is deviation of deviation of a ray of light from its straight line path deviation of light from its from its straight line path round the sharp corners of an aperture or obstacle around the sharp corners around the sharp corners around the sharp corners of an aperture that is of an aperture that is a slit or an obstacle or an obstacle the phenomenon of bending of light around the sharp corners of an aperture or obstacle and encroachment of light into the geometrical shadow of the aperture or obstacle encroachment of light into the geometrical shadow region into the geometrical shadow region of the aperture or the obstacle of the aperture or the obstacle or the opaque obstacle diffraction of light is the phenomenon of bending of light around the sharp corners of an aperture or obstacle and encroachment of light into geometrical shadow of the aperture or opaque obstacle provided provided the dimensions or the size of the aperture or the obstacle provided the dimensions or size of the aperture or the obstacle is comparable to the wavelength of ray of light is comparable to the is comparable with the wavelength is comparable with the wavelength of light with the wavelength of light diffraction of light is the phenomenon of bending of light is the phenomenon of bending of light that is the deviation from its straight line path around the sharp corners of an aperture or an obstacle and encroachment of light into geometrical shadow region of the aperture or the opaque obstacle provided the dimensions or size of the aperture or the obstacle is comparable to the wavelength of light now we can consider a very narrow slit or aperture and uh, a screen will be placed at a certain distance from the aperture or the narrow slit this is the screen this is the screen and and this will be the narrow slit or aperture narrow slit or aperture in this case ab is the aperture or narrow slit ab is the aperture through which parallel rays will be passing that means parallel rays are incident uh, or uh, parallel rays are passing through the aperture ab we are denoting the parallel rays and this parallel uh, rays or parallel beam of light are passing through the aperture these are the parallel rays these are the parallel rays which are passing through the aperture and incident on the screen parallel rays 
parallel rays which travel along straight line according to this diagram and screen is placed at a certain distance from the aperture AB. We can denote geometrical shadow region. This says this region is known as the geometrical shadow region. This region is known as the geometrical shadow region. And we can denote the bright region in the diagram. We can denote the bright region and parallel rays are passing through the aperture AB. A is the aperture width, width of aperture small a. And uh, here uh, the aperture width small a, aperture width small a is not comparable to the wavelength lambda of light. Aperture width is not comparable to wavelength of light. In that case, light will be traveling along straight line. In this case, aperture width. In this case, aperture width is not comparable. Aperture width is not comparable to the wavelength of light. But on the right hand side, you should consider the case in which aperture width will be comparable to wavelength of light. That means a, small a means aperture width will be comparable to lambda means will be comparable to wavelength uh, of light. In this case, light wave uh, bends at the sharp corners a and b of the aperture. In this case, this is the direction along which the light wave bends at the sharp corner e of the aperture a b. In this case, the light wave bends and uh, this light wave which is bent will enter or will encroach into the geometrical shadow region. That is if A is comparable to lambda in that case light wave bends and light wave bends and penetrates into the geometrical shadow region. Into the geometrical shadow region. If A is comparable to lambda, that means aperture width is comparable to wavelength of light. In that case, the light wave bends and penetrates into geometrical shadow region. And in this case, uh, the length of geometrical shadow region decreases or area of geometrical shadow region de decreases because light wave bends at the sharp corners and encroaches into geometrical shadow region. That's why uh, area of geometrical shadow region decreases. We get a geometrical shadow region, reduced geometrical shadow region on the right hand side provided aperture with A is comparable to wavelength lambda of light. Here in the lower portion, portion the light wave bends at the sharp corner B of the aperture AB. And in this case small a is the aperture width and uh, in the lower portion we can denote the reduced geometrical shadow region. We get reduced geometrical shadow region as the light waves bend at the sharp corners of an aperture or obstacle. If a is comparable to lambda in this case in this region on the screen diffraction pattern that is alternate bright and dark bands are formed in this region. Diffraction pattern are formed in this region. That is diffraction pattern means alternate bright and dark bands are formed in this region. That means uh, when secondary wavelets from a plane wavefront superimpose on each other in that case diffraction pattern will be formed in the diagram we have shown a screen which is situated at a particular distance from uh, an aperture a b or narrow slit and a convex lens is placed in front of the aperture a b this is a convex lens and here we should consider that aperture length or aperture with a is comparable to wavelength of light and in this case uh, light waves bend at the sharp corners a and b of the aperture provided a is comparable to lambda and after refraction through the lens secondary wavelets coming from the wavefront a b or uh, the aperture will converge at a point on the screen a b is the aperture and in this case we can assume that a b is also 
wavefront is also known as primary wavefront from which a number of secondary wavelets are generated. AV is the primary wavefront and from which new wave or new disturbance uh, is produced uh, that means and this new disturbance is known as the secondary wavelets. After refraction through the convex lens secondary wavelets, uh, secondary wavelets superimpose at a point on the screen in the focal plane of the convex lens in the focal plane of the convex lens and here the parallel rays uh, passing through the aperture without any deviation will converge at the second principal focus of the lens on the screen. Due to superposition of secondary wavelets from the primary wave front or from the aperture AB, uh, diffraction pattern is formed on the screen and we get uh, central maximum and on either side of the central maximum uh, secondary minimum is formed and uh, and also secondary maximum and secondary minimum will be formed alternatively this is the screen and on which diffraction pattern will be formed and we have shown uh, different bright and dark bands on either side of the sin central maximum this is the first secondary minimum uh, then we can consider second first secondary maximum and so on and this is second secondary minimum so in the lower portion again we have first secondary minimum then uh, again first secondary maximum will be formed on the in the lower portion and this are this alternate bright and dark fringes are known as a diffraction pattern or the diffraction pattern which is formed in the so focal plane of the convex lens due to superposition of secondary wavelets coming from the wavefront AB coming from the wavefront AB. Diffraction pattern diffraction pattern that is alternate bright and dark bands alternate bright and dark bands or fringes uh, that means we can say the diffraction pattern is obtained due to superposition is obtained due to superposition of due to superposition of secondary wavelets from secondary wavelets from the different parts of a wavefront Superposition of secondary wavelets from the different parts of the same wavefront. Diffraction pattern is obtained due to superposition of secondary wavelets from the different parts of the same wavefront. In diffraction pattern, in diffraction pattern, the width of central maximum the width of central maximum the width of central maximum is twice as that of the secondary maximum the width of central maximum is twice as that of secondary maximum in the diagram here we can denote the width of central maximum as beta 0 and beta is the width of secondary maximum such that beta 0 is twice of beta beta 0 is equal to 2 beta now number 2 intensity of secondary maximum intensity of secondary maximum of diffraction pattern goes on decreasing with the order of the diffraction pattern Intensity of secondary maximum goes on decreasing with the order of maximum, with the order of maxima. I0, I0 is the intensity of central maximum and I1 is the intensity of first secondary maximum such that I0 is greater than I1. That means intensity of secondary maximum goes on decreasing with the order of secondary maximum. 
and in the diagram we can plot intensity versus phase difference graph of diffraction pattern in this case intensity decreases goes on the order of the maximum here we can denote uh, the intensity versus phase difference graph of diffraction pattern of diffraction pattern i0 is the intensity of central maximum and which is plotted along this axis we can denote the intensity of first secondary maximum as i1 i1 is the intensity of first secondary maximum uh, and which is denoted in intensity uh, versus phase difference graph such that i1 is less than i0 intensity goes on decreasing with the order of maximum goes on decreasing um, with the order of the maximum this is the spider wave shown in the figure this is the spider wave and color seen color seen in a spider wave colors seen in a spider wave are partially due to color seen in a spider wave are partially due to diffraction of light are partially due to diffraction of light there will be coloring effect uh, in a spider wave due to diffraction of light the effects of diffraction of light the effects of diffraction of light were first observed were first observed and characterized were first observed and characterized by Francisco by Francisco Maria the effects of diffraction of light were first observed and characterized by Francisco Maria Grimaldi Francisco Maria Grimaldi who also coined who also coined the term who also coined the term diffraction who also coined the term diffraction from the latin word from the latin word francisco maria grimaldi who also coined the term diffraction from the latin word from the latin word differentiar 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 to differentiar means to break into to break into pieces the effects of diffraction of light were first observed and characterized by francisco mari grimaldi who also coined the term diffraction from the latin word differenti uh, to break into pieces referring to light referring to light breaking up breaking up into breaking up into different breaking up into different directions different directions differenti the effects of diffraction of light were first observed and characterized by francisco maria grimaldi who also coined the term diffraction from the latin word differenti to break into pieces referring to light breaking up into different directions the circular waves the circular waves generated the circular waves generated by the narrow entrance of circular waves generated by diffraction circular wave generated by diffraction from the narrow entrance from the narrow entrance circular wave generated by diffraction from the narrow 
entrance of a flooded coastal quarry narrow entrance of a flooded coastal coastal quarry that means circular waves generated by diffraction from the narrow entrance of a flooded coastal quarry in the diagram this is the narrow entrance through which water will be passing or will be flowing this is the narrow entrance and water is flowing through this narrow entrance and uh, obviously the water will be diffracted at the sharp corners of the narrow entrance and we get circular waves we get circular waves due to diffraction of light from the narrow entrance of a flooded coastal quarry In the diagram, two razor blades are held so that their sharp edges, so that their sharp edges form, their sharp edges form a narrow slit in between them. Their sharp edges form a narrow slit in between them. These are the two razor blades which are held so that their sharp edges touch with each other and form a narrow slit. These are the two uh, razor blades and here we have the narrow slit or aperture narrow slit or aperture through which a light will be passed and uh, here parallel rays of light are incident so here we can take um, we can take two pieces of potato and we can insert the two razor blades vertically so that their sharp edges touch with each other two blades are uh, placed in such a way that their sharp edges form a narrow slit and they are placed on a black surface and their sharp edges form a narrow slit their sharp edges form a narrow slit and a laser beam or a light is passed through the narrow slit and uh, due to superposition of secondary wavelets from primary wave front uh, diffraction pattern will be formed on the screen this is the diffraction pattern form on the screen due to superposition of secondary wavelets from primary wave front or from the aperture so here uh, this are the diffraction pattern when light waves around arriving out of phase then we get uh, dark fringes or destructive interference occurs and these are the two light waves which will superimpose or obviously here two secondary wavelets superimpose and diffraction pattern will be observed on, on the screen. So here if we observe the uh, source of light through the narrow slit formed by the sharp edges of the two razor blades in that case diffraction pattern will be observed that is alternate bright and dark bands will be observed. These are diffraction uh, pattern and which are formed or obtained due to superposition of secondary wavelets coming from the wavefront or aperture. This is diffraction pattern. So if we see the source of light, in that case, uh, what will be observed? Alternate bright and dark fringes will be obje observed in instead of uh, that source of light, instead of the source of light. In the diagram 
obviously parallel beam or parallel rays of light are passed through the narrow slit formed by the sharp edges of the two razor blades. Here these are the parallel rays or parallel beam which are passed, these are the parallel rays which are passed through the narrow slit, through the narrow slit formed by the two razor blades, uh, through the narrow slit or aperture formed by formed by the two blades, formed by the two blades and here we can consider plane wavefront which are incident on the narrow slit and due to diffraction of light we get circular wavefront and that will be, that will emerge out through the slit and a screen is placed and on this screen diffraction pattern, on this screen diffraction pattern will be formed or will be observed diffraction pattern is obtained or is formed on the screen due to superposition of secondary wavelets from the wavefront or from the aperture. So here two blades are placed so that their sharp edges form a narrow slit. If we look through the narrow slit, if we look through the narrow slit on the source of light placed behind the slit, placed behind the slit or narrow slit, if we look through the slit on the source of light placed behind the narrow slit, in that case a diffraction pattern, a diffraction pattern will be observed a diffraction pattern with bright and dark bands uh, a diffraction pattern with bright and dark bands that is fringes will be fringes will be seen will be seen by the slight adjustment by the slight adjustment of the width of the slit so here the, uh, we can see that two blades are placed such that they are sharp edges touch with each other and narrow slit is formed and here this is the diffraction pattern that means alternate bright and dark bands are observed and this is the central maximum and we get alternate bright and dark bands we get alternate bright and dark bands means secondary maximum and secondary and diffraction minimum we can denote secondary uh, will maximum be observed and secondary minimum the maximum uh, the bright fringe or bright band is known as secondary maximum and dark band or dark fringe is known as secondary minimum.